Our first presenter is Daniel Dejan. As an educator, designer, humanist, mentor, and enthusiast of all things graphic arts, Daniel Dejan has been an evangelist for the power of paper and print for more than 40 years. After a successful 22-year tenure with Sappy North America as the North America Print and Creative Manager, Daniel relaunched De Dejan Associates for its second incarnation, utilizing his decades of graphic design, printing, and marketing experience towards private clients. Daniel is always ready to share his knowledge uh, of the successful and effective marriage of print and paper. He is a hands-on, in-person, and online resource, delivering consultation and presentations to marketers, designers, printers, corporations, and paper merchants, as well as to organizations at public and private events at conferences, throughout North America. In tonight's presentation, Danielle is going to share about the evolution of print technology and how packaging has taken on many new forms by incorporating the lessons of the past with contemporary sensory marketing disciplines to find new ways to engage, educate, entertain, and entice. On a personal note, Danielle is truly one of my Printspiration heroes. And I am so honored that he has chosen Project Peacock as a channel to inspire all of you. If you have questions, please post them in the chat and we will answer them, uh, well, at least as many as we can uh, before the next presentation. Daniel will also be able to see them on the platform and can answer any he didn't get to. You can also start a chat with Danielle by clicking on networking and finding his profile to initiate your communications. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Daniel Dejan. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Deborah. And uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you so much for joining us this, this evening uh, in this evening webinar. And if this is live, if you're seeing the recording, thanks so much for picking this up. And um, we've got a lot to talk about. So I'm going to start moving um, quickly. Um, so, yeah, there have been a lot of extraordinary innovations, some of them going back several decades, some of them five years. Um, everything I'm going to show you this evening actually um, is live. Some of it may not be commercially available, though most of it is. Um, but um, a lot of it started in the print sector, offset and digital, and then started to migrate into packaging, uh, particularly what we see in digital, um, but uh, and flexo, in fact. Um, so um, uh, let's talk about this. You know, we really have an extraordinarily distracted audience. Um, we're just bombarded with content all the time coming to us from a variety of media. And one of the first things that we need to do um, as marketers, as designers, as companies, um, is to make sure that we use engagement techniques. We use techniques that will capture the imagination. Um, you really have a very, very short span of time. Some say it's three to five seconds to be able to capture that attention. And one of the ways that we do it, and particularly after what's happened in the last year uh, during the pandemic, where we lived very much in a two-dimensional world. It was very visual and audio. Uh, we really missed the, the haptic, the sensual, the touch, the smell. Um, and one of the things that we've found um, over many years is, of course, we've seen the growth of the use of embellishments um, and coatings in print and special print techniques. We're seeing that being used now in packaging. We're also seeing some extraordinarily new technology um, uh, being used in packaging. The idea of being able to have these engagement techniques is that when we reach out and we touch something, the minute that we have that, that moment of truth, the first moment of truth and we touch it and we desire it, we also desire to retain it. Um, and that becomes a great sales technique that we need to all be able to um, incorporate in, in everything we do, whether it's uh, flat print or dimensional, um, even in textile. Um, when we touch something and we desire it, it increases the valuation. 
um, we see it uh, as just much more than an object. Um, we also pay more attention to the content and the authorship of the, the, the piece itself. We, we, if we really like something, we'll take the time to read the copy, whether it's in a piece of collateral or, or it's on a package itself. Um, and ultimately, all of this helps for us to build this sort of larger image of the brand um, and to have an emotional reaction to it. Do I like it? Do I not like it? Do I want to associate with it? So much of our buying um, is based on emotional reaction. Um, and we want to be able to create a lasting impression. The biggest challenge we have in, in marketing right now is to remain top of mind. Um, so we want to use multi uh, media, or omni channel um, to try to be able to touch our potential clients or to create loyalty with our current clients by always giving them something that continues that lasting impression. Danielle? And more importantly is, is that motivation to act, um, to buy, um, to join the community. So um, I love this where it says more than half of the brain is devoted to processing sensory experience. And much of that sensory receptivity focuses on touch. We really don't give touch as much credit. Um, it is why we use so many different types of paper or board or finishes. Um, the idea of using soft touch on a package is, is, makes perfect sense. You reach out, you expect something, you feel it and you're like, ooh. That's really nice. Daniel Dejan. Yeah. I'm sorry to bother you. Um, the audience is having a little uh, difficulty hearing you. Can you oh. just speak up just a bit? Yeah, of course. Sorry, sorry. for interrupting you. My no, apologies. no, not at all. Is that better? Um, we'll find out soon. Please okay. continue. Let's keep going. Um, so again, simply touching a product increases our feeling of ownership. Um, we, we create a relationship with the object, whether it's a a brochure, a catalog, a piece of uh, uh, a package. Um, and we immediately, in creating that relationship, create uh, an increased value with the product itself. And product loyalty doubles if we can um, experience a brand with as many senses as possible. Um, so we're also seeing things like scented inks being used now um, in a wide variety of ways. I love this, this statistic. Marketing using special finishing techniques can increase sales by 18%. That's not response rates. That is actual conversion rates. It's the, it's the buy-through that I think is so very important. So what we need to understand right now is our task is really very simple. It's four things. We need to be able to engage. Um, once we have their attention, we need to be able to educate them in some way. And educate is a very broad uh, topic. It can be giving you information um, or it can give you uh, facts and figures and statistics, but it changes your relationship to the, the object itself. Um, if we can, we love to entertain. Again, sensual entertainment can be wonderful, delightful. Um, and lastly, of course, we want to be able to entice, get people to motivate, to act, to purchase. This is such a wonderful piece um, because it really does touch all of your senses. You've got haptics, you've got visual, you have sound. When you grab the handles, you connect the circuit that turns on the LED lights and it's taking your heart rate. So you are delighted in being able to see your own reaction to this, uh, this piece. Now, yeah, it was expensive. I'm not gonna pretend. We want to be able to look big picture, though. And this might be a 30,000 foot view, but stop and look at it this way. There were 50,000 of these pieces that were inserted into special subscribers uh, uh, in style magazines. Um, while 50,000 doesn't sound a lot, uh, like a lot, we also talk about readership. Um, that is to say, how many people do you share it with who then get to see it? Well, interestingly enough, um, this actually in the first two months had over 180 million impressions across media. Um, Camry was 
posted this video on YouTube and made sure that everybody knew about it. Uh, amazingly enough, 50% of consumers spent an average of three minutes with this piece. That's a lot of impression time. And that's a lot of time to be able to start to create this sort of relationship and change your view about Camry the brand. Um, I'm gonna show you a, a number of pieces um, that do exactly that. Um, I love this piece. I've had it for a while. You may have seen this. Um, this is Lego, as you know, wonderful company. Um, they took their boxes and they put um, a UV um, augmented reality stamp on the box so that when you took it up to one of their screens, you could actually see what was inside in 3D in real time. Now, Lego is a very successful company. Well, they shared with us that they had at least a 20% in-store sales increase everywhere that they put this Lego screen. Um, so of course they were trying to put it everywhere. Um, Toys are us, kids are us, uh, et cetera. Probably one of the very best at doing this is Ikea. They take their catalog very seriously. It is on hold for now, but they take their catalog very seriously and they crossed merged it with um, an app that lets you actually choose the piece of furniture and then scan your room and whether in inches or in centimeters, it would show you exactly how it would fit. So that didn't happen. This, I don't know why this did not get more play. I went crazy when I see this. This was the 100th anniversary of Forbes magazine and they had Warren Buffett on the cover and that little circle said, download this app on your phone and you will be able to see Warren Buffett as a hologram. But here's the cool part. You will be able to ask him questions and through uh, AI it will, and speech recognition, it will I understand your question and Mr. Buffett will answer you. So he shot on a green screen. You use the app. There he is as a hologram on your phone. So stop and think about the implications of this. The idea that we can use artificial intelligence, voice recognition, and augmented reality triggers on printed pieces, on packaging, and we are literally at the brink where we can start to have a conversation, a relationship with print and packaging. So, Wonderful concept. This is um, organic light emitting diode, uh, OLED. You all know what it is. You have one probably in one of, or several of your rooms. But this was invented by Sony. Um, they started the research in the late 80s, really perfected it in the 90s, but it was extraordinarily expensive um, and didn't see a lot of practical application. Um, what this brings up is that concept that you're looking at an OLED that is so thin that it can literally be pasted onto um, a catalog cover or a, a video postcard or even packaging. Um, as you can see, video really is um, an extraordinarily powerful way of being able to communicate. Um, at one time, it was sort of standalone. What we're, what we're finding out is how to be able now to incorporate it into uh, two and three dimensional pieces. So the idea that you can do something like a video postcard where you have a package that goes through the mail um, and when it's opened, it delivers a video message. 
Um, this is so powerful. We're seeing this being used in education, autom automotion, automotive, pharmaceuticals. Um, so many companies are using this. Um, and what we're seeing is the possibility now of being able to apply it to a wide variety of packaged forms. Um, they can go through the mail, they can be dropped off, they can be given away um, at conferences and events. But that idea of being able to capture your, your ideal message and be able to deliver it in a print package or in a, a two-dimensional package becomes extraordinarily powerful as a way of our being able to bring a message and create a relationship and get a lot across. Um, this is very, very exciting. The potential of this um, is extraordinary. It has a, a, a base that will, will take uh, your ability to upload um, and that lets you upload a message as long as you want, depending on how much you wanna buy. Um, the screen sizes change um, pretty dramatically. Um, so you're starting to see this being used quite a bit. Um, that idea of the application to packaging to me, I think is most exciting. Um, any company that has got a portfolio or wants to be able to deliver a message can use something like this. What we're, tr what we're starting to see is how we can apply it to different surfaces. Um, and we're seeing this being used in entertainment, um, again, automotive. I'm, I'm waiting because I really want you to see this last part of, the, uh, of this video because it's, it's really wonderful. They make it small enough so that it is a business card. So the fact of the matter is everybody knows what an elevator speech is. This is your elevator speech. Um, and it's got all of your information. This is a beautiful example of the mix of the two. Um, this is a company out of Germany called Inuru, um, and they really have done a spectacular job of being able to use um, OLED in formats um, that really change the way that we look at packaging, uh, retail packaging, consumer packaging, uh, any kind of packaging that, that you want to create a relationship with the, the end user. Um, I think this is really, really exciting. This exists, by the way. Uh, it's just not commer as commercially available as we would like it to be, but I be prepared to start seeing this quite a bit. So this takes us to new technology. This is um, uh, uh, technology that is printed, was started as screen printing, is now can be done in offset, can be done um, digitally with modified digital printers. Um, one of the first applications that I thought was amazing was to be used for things like wallpaper, uh, to be able to illuminate a room rather than using bulbs, makes sense. But as you can imagine, the next practical application for this um, was things like safety jackets for utility workers or riders or runners. Um, this was actually carried one step further um, and we're now seeing modified printers being able um, to do this by changing the heads um, and delivering uh, an electroconductive uh, and electroluminescent toners. I'm saying toners. Um, what's interesting about this is that um, the battery can be printed, physically printed um, onto the piece itself and now we are now starting to see paper that can carry a charge um, so that the paper as it's being manufactured actually can be put on a power pad, can take electromagnetic waves and then turn that into a source to be able to do this. So as you can imagine, of course, um, the use in packaging is extraordinary. This actually is quite old. It's probably four years old, five years old printed in Germany. But that idea that you can actually use electroluminescent and um, inks, electroconductive inks um, in a packaging situation uh, just makes your mind open up and think of all the extraordinary applications 
um, cosmetics, pharmaceutical, obviously uh, entertainment, alcohol. Um, so yeah, they're standalone. And they're pretty amazing and they're pretty extraordinary. Um, I mean, when was the last time you saw a bottle of Jägermeister? Now, the one thing I will tell you up front is this doesn't make it taste any better, but you will be able to see it in a dark bar. So um, I think this is really wonderful. Now, this is the best current application I've seen. That changes our view of how we see packaging. Packaging now can be multidimensional. You can have print and you can take certain parts of it and illuminate it. You can program it. Um, uh, there's a, a wonderful YouTube uh, a video channel called uh, Unboxing. And the gentleman there actually, um, oops, sorry, beg your pardon. Um, shows how he actually went ahead and, hmm, wow, beg your pardon, how he actually in his unboxing took the piece and opened it up to show exactly how it works. And um, it's fascinating. And again, all of this is printed. Anyway, he does that with so many different products. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, so I love this um, statistic where it says 62% of people watching unboxing videos are researching with the intent to purchase. Uh, one of the, the, the new, um, not that new, but you know what I mean, um, methods of being able to build community is, of course, with influencers. And one of the, the best influencing videos, of course, is that, that a, a video of receiving a subscription box and opening it up and then reviewing all the products inside. Um, this goes from really young demographics. I mean, five, six, seven-year-olds all the way up. Um, this really is extraordinary um, as a form of being able to engage the viewer and get them to anticipate this um, uh, subscription box and obviously subscribe to it. Um, and I really think that this is um, so important. Um, I love where it says, um, again, that um, we are gravitating towards that physical experience. And particularly after last year, you know, shopping was up. We loved receiving boxes and packages and everything else because it gave us that haptic experience, um, that tangibility. And it's one of the things, quite frankly, uh, when we talk about that, that love of haptics and touch, it's, it is in fact why we still love books and magazines and vinyl records and Polaroid photos and all of the things that we thought were uh, going or obsolete really have got a new life um, and very honestly is brought back to life by younger demographics, um, the revenge of analog, um, as it would be said. So oops. I love this. Um, this is Kate Stone. This is a TED Talk. And I just want to show you the early parts of it. But she is an engineer out of England. She hocked her house and, and three credit cards. She bought a printing press, knew nothing about printing, but had done her, her PhD thesis on this concept of being able to print circuitry that could in fact be programmed to connect to Bluetooth, which is now being connected to her iPad during the talk. So, she does this, and interestingly, at the end of her TED Talk, a gentleman walks up to her, and the TED Talk dream can come true. He said, God, that was just fascinating. I'd love to start a company with you. How much money do you need? And she was bowled over. Long story short, they, in fact, started a company together called Novalia, 
and this was their first product. can really trigger creativity in young people. That's why McDonald's and the Netherlands introduced McTracks, a paper place map turned into a full music production station. By the use of conductive ink on a piece of paper, we can on a piece of paper connecting you to your smartphone. So I love that video because I think when we, we, we look at that and we realize what the possibilities are, it changes so much of how we allow our imagination to take off. That it allows us to stop and think that as designers or marketers or manufacturers, we can really look at this in, in, in a way where we start asking ourselves, not just how is it gonna look, but how is it going to feel? And not only how is it going to feel, but how is it going to impact the, that person in the store or when they receive it in, uh, at home in a box? Um, that idea that we can create that absolutely stunning packaging um, and use these marvelous techniques that are available to us, whether they are um, embellishments in terms of foil stamping, die cutting, embossing, et cetera, or, or coatings like grit or soft touch, um, or that we start to really incorporate completely new technology like conductive inks or luminescent inks. Um, while it does bring the cost up, yes, but the fact of it is the impact is so dramatic and so extraordinary um, that in fact the ROI really does. And again, not just the response rates, but the conversion rates, the purchase rates, and the loyalty. And can you imagine buying something in a store that has all these marvelous techniques, whatever they are, and bringing it at home and sharing it with your friends and family and colleagues, you in fact are doing the work of the brand that is exactly how we build community and how we build loyalty. So we, again, we want to attract and engage and delight and what we want them to do is to purchase and then evangelize us um, and try our products because they were so delighted by our past products that we've set a precedent. Um, and then once having that community, being able to make it bisynchronous where we can say, you like that? Hey, how else would you like to see it done? What would you like us to, to use it on next? Or how would you like to see a, an application? And I think that this is going to give us a truly a whole new range of products and more so business models for us to think about. Um, so um, I love this uh, Nielsen information that Nielsen states that the best in class packaging can drive increased attention on the shelf by 31%, increased levels of trials by 64% and repeat pur purchases by 41%. Now this is exactly what we wanna be able to bring to the C-suite. You know, this is exactly how we can have a powerful argument um, to be able to, to get them to commit the dollars um, or at least experiment, even on a small trial. Um, so I love this. Um, anyway, again, really right now, when we are looking at the new business model in the new world of print and packaging, the idea of, of being able to engage and educate and entertain as well as entice really sort of gives us new direction. So I love this quote. Um, this is the actual quote, by the way, from Charles Darwin. It is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is most adaptable to change. And the more we can adapt to change, the better it'll be for us all. So thank you very much. I, I hope that you've enjoyed this. I know that it felt like a stone sort of skipping on, on top of the water. Um, you can reach me down there. I'm at daniel at dijonassociates.com, and I'd be happy to share any of this information with you gladly. So enjoy the rest of the, of the, the show, and I'll be around. So talk to you soon. Daniel, thank you so much. Um, 
if uh, you could stop sharing your screen, perfect, then we could see you. Um, there was only actually one question about uh, finding a resource for Electrolum, but I think Adam Peak might have answered that unless you have um, somebody that you might uh, know of in the US doing that. There are a number of companies that are doing it right now. Canon Minolta, uh, MDI is doing it. Um, also, there are um, uh, certainly a lot of research being done by the major ink companies like SunCam, et cetera. Um, and they're the ones who are helping sponsor that, that level of research um, right now. So yeah, uh, those would be the, the first places I would reach out. Uh, there's a ton of information, by the way, if you go to YouTube and you simply type in electroluminescence, there are tons of videos, some of them historic, some of them that are to date. Um, mostly uh, the rest of it is when you pop into the platform, you'll see just people really engage with what you, you were sharing and very appreciative of giving them inspiration as I guaranteed you would. So thank you for helping me live up to that. Always and, a pleasure. Sir, I don't even know what to say to you. You are my hero. You really well, are. Thank you so much. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to pull up um, Adam and Kirk now. Absolutely. And we're going to hear them. Thank you so much for I really appreciate it. You bet. Take care.